We are definitely living in super exciting times. Uh, almost 50% of the global population is already online. And, uh, and on, another four years from now, 2020, 75% of the global population would be online. There are close to 50 billion connected devices to the likes of your TVs, refrigerators, coffee makers, music system, garage doors, air conditioners, all talking to each other constantly. This is the kind of stuff that we used to see in sci-fi movies, but indeed, this is becoming a reality. All you have to do is keep your eyes and ears open. You can see it around you. India is definitely accelerating, and we have seen some tremendous growth in terms of number of internet users in the country, number of smartphone users, the penetration in terms of number of people who are transacting online has really increased. So having said that, can a startup really contribute to the startup economy of a country like India? Where do we need to head in order to cater to the next billion users? So before that, let's do some math in terms of the number of startups in the country. So currently, there are 1,000 new startups which has been incorporated every single year. And India, as you know, is already the third largest startup ecosystem in the world after UK and uh, uh, US. The good part is, when I speak to the engineering students, eight out of 10 engineering students want to pursue their startup idea, or the rest two of them, they want to join a startup. So we are, at the current rate, adding somewhere around six million new internet users every single month. So that takes us, in terms of number of internet users, to 462 million. So these numbers definitely look pretty much healthy, but what does it really mean to the internet economy of a country like India? So let's do some math out here. If you drill down the number of smartphone users in the country out of those 465 million, there are just around 250 million smartphone users. And if you're looking at people who are always connected, it's around 180 million. And if you're looking at people, if you look in a country like India, most of us are on 2G, 2.5G, and sometimes no G at all. And that's where we are talking about your Apache networks. And people who have got consistent 3G networks and who are always connected and who access internet at least two or three times a day, that's around 100 million uh, people. Out of them, there are only 40 million people who have transacted at least once to buy any kind of a product or services online in the last 12 months. So what does that exactly mean in terms of your total addressable market? We are talking about four crore people out of a population of 132 crores who have used the services. So basically, there's a huge amount of failure for us to recognize the difference between internet users and internet consumers, which has probably messed up the entire estimate of the market. So if you're looking at the total addressable market in a country like India, who have got disposable income to spend on product and services is close to 150 million. Let's look into the India demographics. If you look into it, there are close to 150 million people who are already transacting online, who have been using our services, which mimic that of a developed market. You've got another 400 million people whom we call popularly as the Indian middle class. These are the people who have got aspiration to move on and become ambitious. And you've got another 650 million people who mimic that of a poor nation. So currently, if you look at the startups that we have in the last 10 years who have come out in the market, these are people who have been just catering to the India One market. Having said that, I truly believe it's time to get fascinated about the India 2 and the India 3 markets in the next five years. These are markets where you can create moats and stickiness. These are the first time internet users. They need guidance, they need solutions which can transform their lives, which is pretty much immediate in nature. Where do you exactly find them? These are people who re really live right next door. All you have to do is walk a couple of kilometers, and these are people who live in the chawls of your same city. So no, need not move around a lot in order to know what their needs are. It's high time we learn from the success of Patanjali as much as you learn from the success stories of Amazon. And for all you know, you might find the pot of gold right behind, uh, beneath your pyramid. The game has really changed in terms of the expectations from a VC. The VC ecosystem is really maturing, and there are new benchmarks for raising a capital at different levels. Definition of success has completely changed. It used to be one hockey stick growth, but now the expectation is to have that hockey stick growth every alternate year consistently. 
founders are taking time out to take to understand the real meaning of success, which has to be consistent, scalable, and long-term in nature. If you look at most of the successful companies like Apple or Google, these are companies which are built on great consumer insights. And the founders need to spend a lot of time gathering those insights before they jump into productizing the, their idea. This is the first and foremost important step in a startup journey.